Welcome to Craft Academy. My name's Catherine Sturrock and I'm here today to introduce to you the Sugar Buttons Design Moulds made by Katie Sue. I'm going to bring to you today a demonstration using polymer clay. This will enable you to make the characters from the Sugar Buttons range and use on your home decor projects as well as your card making, paper crafting and many other projects that you'd like to make. So before we begin I'm just going to talk a little bit about the polymer clay. Polymer clay when it comes from the pack needs to be conditioned. By conditioning we simply mean to warm up the clay. This is easily done just by rolling onto a glass mat or a tile or a piece of marble or granite, something that's got a totally smooth hard surface. All you need to do is just roll the clay until it starts to become pliable. The more you roll and the warmer the clay gets, the more pliable it becomes. I've already chosen some colours for my particular demonstration, which is going to be the ballerina from the Sugar Buttons range. This is the ballerina mould. These moulds are made by Katie Sue Designs and can be used with both air dry clay and polymer clay. They're very deep and very detailed and I'm going to show you a method of working with the polymer clay so that you can build up the colours in layers so when you release the character from the mould it is already coloured for you ready to bake in the oven. So to begin I'm going to start with my chosen colours which is a skin tone colour, I've gone for an aqua for the dress, pink for some of the details and a light brown for the hair and then I'm going to just use tiny bits of clay for the eye detail. Before you start, just gather together some of your tools. I'm using a sculptor's tool, which has a metal tip to it, which is slightly curved in shape, shaped, but there are other tools that you can use. Just find things from around the home, such as a rounded end of a paintbrush. You can also use a ball tool, which is used for scoring uh, lines into card making, and also a sugar crafter's tool. This one is called a Dresden tool, and again, it has a curved foot on it and that enables you to push the clay into the detailed areas of the mould. Now when we're beginning with the mould you need to look at the deepest areas. We're working from the front to the back so the first colours that you apply to the mould are going to be those that are actually on the face when you release the character from the mould it will be those that you will see first. So for instance if I'm working on the head she's got a little flower in her hair so we're going to start with the flower then the hair and then onto the face. But this will become more clear as I go through the demonstration. So to start with, I'm going to choose some of the pink clay and I'm just going to roll out a piece of the clay, again to condition it, just to soften it and make it more pliable. And then I'm going to start to apply the colours into the mould. So for the flower in the hair, I'm just going to cut a little bit of clay and roll into a ball you soon get to realise the size of the clay that you will need for each area of the mould. I'm just pushing the clay into the area of the flower. There's also actually one on this dress as well, so I'm going to do the same thing there. Just a little ball of clay, pick it up with a tool and push into the mould. So you can see there, we've got the two little flowers already in place. Now the ballerina has obviously ballet shoes on so we need to put those in as well so I'm choosing to use the pink colour for the ballet shoes. Because of the detail, the fine detail of the mould, the straps on the shoes can be quite tricky if you put the colours in straight away. So I'm actually going to leave those out and come back to them later. I'll explain why as I get to that part of the demonstration. So I'm just applying the little pink areas of the shoe pushing it into the mould. There's no need to prepare the mould with anything like cornstarch. Just as long as you've washed out with warm soapy water and thoroughly dried the mould before you begin, you can then apply the clay straight into the mould. So now I've applied the pink into the shoe area and also the two little flowers. We're going to move on now to the skirt and the, and the bodice of the dress. I've chosen the aqua for this. I, it's one of my favourite colour schemes, the pink and the aqua together, so I do use this often. I'm just rolling again the clay to soften it. 
So just a couple of times on the glass mat will be enough to warm the clay ready for the mould. Now you will see the skirt area of the mould itself is on a curve. So I've rolled the clay into a sausage shape and I'm just going to feed that around into the skirt. And once again, using my tool, I'm going to push into the detailed area of the mould. Now it is quite important here not to overfill. If you overfill with the colours, when you start to apply the other layers on the top, you may find that the colours will bleed into each other. So I'm being very careful just to keep the clay within the area of the skirt without overfilling. It doesn't matter that you don't come right to the top of the mould as long as you've covered the detailed area. I'm then going to move on to the bodice of the dress. So for this I'm rolling a ball of clay until it's a little bit uh, smoother and then just push that into position and using my tool I'm again just applying that into the mould. This time I'm going to feed the clay around the shape of the hairline. The ballerina actually has a little bun in her hair and she, you can see all the strands, the detail will be picked up beautifully with the clay once we release the character from the mould. So again, I'm starting to work the clay into the areas that I need to fill with this particular colour. Now the hair, in particular, has some little fine areas that need to be filled. The ballerina has a little fringe, so I'm just pulling down some of the clay into that area so that the fringe itself is already in place and then using the tool to push away from the, from the facial area where we don't need those strands of hair. So by using the skin tone clay, we can now start to fill in the remaining areas of the mould. Once again, I'm going to roll out the clay and soften it a little bit and I'm actually going to make it into a sausage shape, roughly the same width as the legs of the ballerina. Don't worry if you make them slightly wider or slightly thinner, we can always top up with the clay afterwards. I'm going to actually now feed the clay into the mould and this time it doesn't matter if I actually work the clay over the top of the previous colours. You've got to remember that you're working from the front to the back. So we've already filled the areas where the detail is going to be seen. I've just applied one leg of the ballerina there and I'm going to then work the clay around the other leg and straight over the top of the skirt. As I say, you don't need to make this look pretty at the back because you're going to stick this onto your project and it will never be seen. A little bit more clay for the arms. So once again, I will roll out and condition the clay, make it nice and warm and pliable and once again feed into the mould. I've now filled in the little arm areas which leaves us with the face. Once again, a piece of clay for the skin tone and roll into a ball. If you roll this nice and smooth, this will ensure that you get a lovely area for the face without any discrepancies that will show. The, d the face itself has got little fine detail for the eye area, the nose and the mouth. So if I just pop that little piece of clay in there, I'm not actually going to push that right in just yet because this is where I'm going to fill in those extra bits of hair that I mentioned earlier. So you can see at the side of the head there, we've got two areas that still need to be filled. The reason I've done this is because polymer clay will stick to itself without the use of any glows. And because these two strands that need to be applied now are at the top of the mould, you would be, have been at risk of them falling into the mould if you didn't apply something else there first. So the head itself is acting as a stopper, which is allowing these two strands to be applied without falling down into the mould. You can then take your tool and once again push these areas into the detail and we're almost there. Now that we've got the rest of the hair in place, I'm just going to push straight down on top of the polymer clay just to flatten and make sure that the clay itself has, has been fed into the detailed area of the face. You can now take a rolling pin, I'll just remove those tools a little bit, and roll across the back of the mould. The rolling pin will work to the edges of the mould where the rim is, and you can see if you need to then top up the clay or remove anything. You've got this lovely outer lip to the mould, which allows you to flex the mould easily just by pulling down. 
Now the character itself will start to pop upwards as you pull down on the rim of the mould. So just take your fingertips and gently ease the character out of the mould. There you can see, although the back of the mould looked very untidy, you can see how we've picked up the detailed areas of the ballerina, the flower in the hair, the, the hair area itself, the skirt and the bodice of the dress. You'll remember also that we left the little straps from the shoes. This is now the time that we're going to complete the shoes and fill those in. It's much easier to do this now rather than trying to get the clay into the mould itself. So all I need to do to complete the shoes is take a little bit of the pink clay that I was working with before, roll out, make sure it's nice and soft and then using the rolling pin you can flatten this out just so that it's a very thin sheet of clay. Take a craft knife, you can use the straps on the character itself as a guide, you can see exactly what sort of width you need to cut these to and simply cut the strands with a craft knife and apply over the top of the area where the detail needs to be added. This way you're not, you can certainly just apply these bits of clay exactly in the right place so that everything is nice and neat. The thinner you roll the clay the less bulky the character will appear and it will sit nicely within those detailed areas of the mould. A very similar thing I'm, I'm now going to use for the straps on the ballerina's dress. So going back to the aqua colour, I'm rolling out once again and then cutting some fine little strips of clay which I can then apply to the top of the bodice just to finish off the ballerina's dress. So I remove any excess and once again this makes it a much neater job rather than trying to get those fiddly bits directly into the mould. Now obviously we've still one very important detail missing and that's the eye area. Now there's a number of ways that you can actually apply the eyes. With it being polymer clay I do prefer to do this now by rolling out a piece of white clay. Just roll it out very thinly. You can make strands as thin as you like. I'm picking up a little piece of clay just cutting it off with a craft knife and then using a fingertip I'm rolling that in the palm of my hand and then use the point of the craft knife just to pop that into place. Same the other side as well. And then I'm just using the end of a paintbrush. You could use anything that's got a rounded end. Just gently push that in position so that the, the clay is adhered in place and then take in a tiny bit of black clay I'm once again going to repeat the same method but with a smaller ball of clay. If you find with, that when you first use the sugar buttons moulds or any moulds for characters and you're needing to apply the eye area if you find this a little bit tricky you could actually bake the character before doing this and then paint them in with an acrylic paint or alternatively you could use a seed bead and just push into the clay and that's another good way of applying the eye detail. So once again I'm just going to push the black clay into place and you can see now she's starting to come alive. Now I'm just scraping the surface of the white clay and adding two little highlights to each eye. Once again it adds character and it brings the little ballerina to life. And again, if you find this a little bit tricky when you're just begin at be beginning, you can use acrylic paint to add these two little white dots, but it really does make a difference. So there we are. We've finished the character itself, so she's ready to go onto a baking sheet into the oven. I'll just turn around so you can see. Thank you for joining me today. You can check the website for further instructions and demonstrations using the Sugar Buttons and Katie Sue moulds. We also have a demonstration using the air dry clay for the Sugar Buttons moulds for your projects. Thank you for joining me today.